Hey guys, it's uh, good to see y'all again. And um, I'm on my 51 Husqvarna project, my other one. This is the third one that I've uh, rolled out of here. And what we've got going on is uh, I'm piston swapping it. I've got a 028 Super Steel piston sitting in the uh, on the rod and we'll do some talking about it um, I already put it on and have uh, also already uh, got my timing numbers and it's smacking the uh, uh, ground electrode on the spark plug so we're going to address that situation today and uh, I'm going to try to run another fuel line for this thing and well we'll just go ahead and get after it guys all right as you can see i've already got the uh 028 super piston sitting right here on this 51. um i need to run a fuel line on it but right now my major issue is that little dome right there is smacking the electrode and closing it up on the cylinder so if i can get you to focus that's all it done, so I mean, it's just barely touching it. So I'm gonna run this into the cylinder and see how far she sticks out to start with. So just gonna run it down in there. And it actually comes out to one side just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this part right here and I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna put a relief in the uh, piston i could use a base gasket but i want to keep my squish number down to uh 25 foul where it's sitting at so we're going to pull the piston off and i'm going to do some talking with these 028 pistons you got to uh relief here and relief on this side that way you keep your piston centered on the connecting rod on the 51 and next we're going to address the uh this right here and you can see there's a little line on there where it smacked the electrode and what we're going to do is we're just going to grind that out just a little bit it won't take a whole lot and i'm going to attempt to do that and match it on the other side too that way the uh piston is relief for the spark plug so i'm going to get set up and bring you guys over and we're going to do that so now I'm going to go ahead and cut my relief right here where it smacked the, uh, the uh, ground electrode. It's just not going to take much. I'm going to use that little double cut ball here. And if I hold it still, I wouldn't have all those love marks on top. But this is just a trial and error type thing anyway. Um, it's what I've got. Is uh, this 28 piston here. It didn't run me for about six bucks. If it don't work like this, then what we'll do is we'll... Um, well, if it does work, we'll buy another one, buy one a little higher quality than this. But I'm going to go ahead and try to notch out both sides just to kind of balance the piston out. I don't know that it's going to make any difference necessarily. So I'm actually going to try to make both sides of this mount. And 
and I'm pretty sure I've already went far enough on it. I just want to make for sure that it's not going to smack the electrode again. And there's several things I could have done. I could have uh, indexed the plug where it didn't go in as far. All kinds of different ways of doing this. But when you got a $6 piston, I mean, you could try stuff like this and not feel bad about it. And if I like how it works, I'll buy a higher, a higher end piston. I will. I'm just just playing around with an idea. Which I'm thinking if I ramp this up enough, uh, it'll shoot some of that charge straight up into the... Uh, center of the uh, combustion chamber and I'll have to do some finished work on it and all that I mean it's not perfect like it is by no means but you never really know anything until you actually try it out and see what happens because really uh, just the uh, squish band here on the piston is enough to make me happy with what I've got as far as my squish. So I'm just going to continue grinding away at this until I get something that kind of ramps up in the middle. Whether or not this is the best idea, I have no idea. We're going to try it. And this is solid cast into the top of the piston. I mean, it's not, it's not like this little hump here is, is not, but the very center of it is, but the rest of it's not. So I'm really not hurting the integrity any. Run my tool real slow here so I can kind of get it dressed up a little bit. And just see if I can't ramp that charge up the center. Something about like that is kind of what I'm going for. And I'm probably going to run it just like this without polishing it or anything. I don't see this going to make a whole lot of difference for a uh, research and development type deal. So uh, we're going to clean the piston up. We're going to put the rings on it. And we're going to install it in the saw. All right. So I've got my piston ready to go on. And I have my, my sir clips right here. I'm going to go ahead and pop my sir clips out. I'm going to put one in already. And I'm going to do the one on the clutch side. And I'm just going to push the pin in from the clutch side. So let me get this thing put in here. Which uh, I'm going to use my pliers. I'm just going to grab my pliers and get it in that groove. If I can get it in there. That's the other kicker. Sometimes they don't cooperate and you shoot them across the room and all kinds of good stuff. And it's in there and she is tight. So I'm going to go ahead 
oil up my finger and drop oil down into the crankcase, put it in the uh, wrist pin bearing, and try not to get it on any kind of sealing surface. Put it on the uh, rod bearing down there. And I'm gonna try to rub it over here in there and uh, where the bearings are. That way she starts out at least with a little bit of lubrication. But as I said, this is a research and development thing. I'm just trying something to see whether or not it even it's even going to work and even feasible. So we'll find out. So now I'm trying to get the. Uh, you can't see from my hands in the way, but uh, I'm trying to get the uh, piston and the wrist pin all lined up with the bearing and the connecting rod and all that good stuff. And as of right now I'm lined up, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this screwdriver and I'm just gonna insert it inside the so I can push. And now I've got my wrist pin in. And I'm gonna grab the other sir clip which is up here somewhere on the bench. I'm gonna grab it. I've got a whole lot of projects going on uh, up here on the bench right now. I've got a clone saw that I am putting together for uh, DIY with the Mitchells. I've got a 390 steel that I'm working on. And I have a 250 steel that I'm also working on. And the 250, I'm going to do the 390 conversion just because it's the same kind of money either way. And I've almost got that uh, sir clip in here. Almost. Almost, but not really. They sometimes a chore to get in there. And this one's going to fight it all the way, so we may come in here sideways with it and do it sideways. And I'm trying to grab it just by the very end there. And it may be the wrong sword clips altogether. I don't remember. These could be a set of sword clips for a 372. Let me check. Before I get way too far involved in this. That's what happens when you got way too much stuff going on at one time. But I don't think they are. I really don't think they are. Um, no, they fit kind of loose in a 372 piston. So that's not what they are. They are this. Try to barely just grab it with the end of those pliers so I can get it started. And when I get it in there, I'll roll it to where I want it. And I may just go ahead and do this off camera and come back with you. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna turn you off and I'll fight with it off camera. Okay, word of advice, use the uh, the steel 028 super uh, wrist pin. Don't use the, the Husqvarna one. It's a little longer. So, yeah, that's why I'm struggling so much and having to fight it. And there's not much difference in the length. It's just enough difference. If that makes any kind of sense whatsoever. It's just enough difference. Because now I can get to the groove and the other I couldn't. I couldn't even get to the 
the groove where the sword clip went in. So I'm gonna fight this thing again off camera and I just thought I'd hop in just to let you know, make sure you do that. All right, now since the sword clip is on and everything's good to go, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze my oil up in my oil, in my two-stroke oil here. We're gonna just dab that finger and we're just gonna wipe that cylinder down. Pay close attention to where the rings first start in and it will wipe oil the rest of the way up. So just remember that and uh, then we're going to go ahead and uh, wipe a little bit on the uh, piston. On the rings. On the skirt. Don't have to be a whole lot. Just enough so it, when it turns over and starts the first time, it's not dry. And we may not even get it started today. gonna take the cylinder and start setting it on the piston and I'm gonna use my thumbnail and just push the rings in with my thumbnail just like I always do I just take my thumbnail push the ring and it will start up in there all right now we got the cylinder started and we're going to go ahead and take our uh, moto seal, not our JB weld, but our moto seal. So I don't, I don't want JB welded on there. So I'm going to go ahead and take my moto seal, pull the cap, and uh, just start laying really thin, really thin around the flange on the crankcase, and also really thin on the cylinder itself and this is just research and development guys i'm just taking y'all along for the ride and then what we're planning on doing is i'm going to stack it up with just a piston swap against the uh the one that I ported. So we're gonna stack them both up side by side and, and see which one is, is better. Is it better just to piston swap or do we uh, need to piston swap and still do a little bit of work? And I'm trying to be very ginger with the, the moto seal. I'm gonna come around on the other side and continue wiping moto seal on the uh, crankcase. And when I figure out what uh, what works better between porting and actually retrofitting a 028 piston in one. I'll let you guys know. And I'll probably try them out on video so you can see the difference between one that was actually a ported cylinder with a standard 55, 46 millimeter piston, or this one here, it just has the uh, 028 Super piston. So we'll see. we'll see what the difference is between them. So I got my cylinder setting down now. I'm gonna go ahead and get my bolts, put my bolts in, and then I'll get right back with you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put this carb bracket on. It's not very difficult. You just gotta line everything up. And make sure that the boot goes on. And you just kind of work it back and forth and it will eventually take and go on. I say that and this one wants to be a, a butt head and don't want to cooperate. I 
Now this one just does not want to cooperate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the boot off and just spin it around the other direction to where I actually have a better opening to work with. It's both ends are the same size. There's no difference in the size on them. I'm gonna go ahead and get that thing cleaned back out. And we're gonna try it again. And this time it should work. And it is, it's going right on there. Just make sure the impulse lines up with the little piece of rubber down there that it sets in. Then I've got to take and put a little screw in that holds the, uh, the air part that uh, runs fresh air from the crankcase uh, from the flywheel rather up to the uh, air filter to keep the air filter kind of clean. I'm gonna go ahead and roll my flywheel around because my magnet's grabbing the screw faster than I can get it putty. So just gonna tighten that little screw down there. Since that dude's already down here, kind of where I want it at, I'm gonna go ahead and push it the rest of the way so I get my screw started. Just gonna put a screw in here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my power just because I want to go ahead and put the screw in. And I've got to hold against it to keep it lined up and crash the saw in the process. It'd be all right though. And you don't have to crank them down very hard. They don't really require all that pressure. This was a relatively clean probably a very low hour saw. Just gonna make sure the function of everything's all right. And go ahead and grab my bolts for the, uh, to mount the carburetor with. I've already got the gasket on there. I need to find the other bolts. And I laid everything in the box over here so it's really easy to really easy to find. And I need the throttle linkage. Which is also laid in this box. And the choke linkage, which is also laid in that box. Which I become a very, very big advocate of uh putting all your linkages and stuff in boxes now just for the simple fact that uh, everything seems to work out better when you go to finding it. Um, that's just something that I figured out and uh, maybe you guys can learn from my screw ups. And I gotta get the choke lever put in. Maybe easier to go ahead and pull the choke on. I don't know. It is. So I got my throttle and I got my choke. And I will have to hook my fuel line up too, at, all at the same time. So y'all just hang with me here and we'll get that done too. I need about, I'm gonna go ahead and run my fuel line up underneath here where it goes. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my fuel line right here.
just a quick snip. We're gonna hook the fuel line to the carburetor. Run the fuel line underneath. We're gonna make sure we start the uh, throttle linkage down here where it belongs. Try to hold the gaskets and the bolts so everything sets still. And once again, I'm gonna go ahead and use my power. I don't really wanna drive them home with it. But one click is good enough to suit me. And when I was putting the uh, the line in the tank, I went ahead and pulled uh, pulled those uh, mounts out too. So we're gonna go ahead. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna loop them up, and they should slide in a little easier. Cause I like to never got it out. And if they swell up, they just swell up. It's fine. We could swap them out later. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it lubed up where it just slide in there. We'll do the same thing with the other one. Gonna lube it up so it'll slide in too. And I know it's I know it's gonna need mounts, so I'm not too awful bad worried about how they look like or whatever, just as long as they go in there today. Um, and then we'll go over here, we'll put that, uh, we'll put that little cover back on that holds the mount in, it's, which it's not nothing very special, it's just a little uh, plastic cover that holds the mount. And the uh, recoil assembly actually holds the other mount in. So. Like I said, I don't want to really over tighten it or kill it or nothing like that right now. But the throttle works, the choke works. I'm not sure how everything else is going to work. As I haven't quite got to that point just yet. But we are going to try to do a halfway job with it just to find out. I'll probably have it apart again and probably several times again. But that's all right. That's where that's what research and development's all about. It's just kind of finding out what works, what don't work. I mean, I've done several of these, well, two of these 51s that, uh, that you all have seen on, on my channel, but, Now we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, starter uh, starter screws in. After I drop them everywhere, and I'll probably let my guy that uh, took the other one and uh, ran it against his 60cc class stuff. I'd probably let him take this one and run it too. That way it's like a really non-biased and he can just figure out which one he likes better. Um, 
the timing numbers on this one are just with the uh, the piston swap. Nothing but the piston swap. It's got uh, 20, 25,000 squish. It's got a 107 exhaust roof. It has 133 on the upper transfers, which is 26 degree blowdown. And it has an 80 degree when it closes on the intake, so. And that's measurements from top dead center down. So now we're getting right, right here, right close into uh, figuring out how she uh, percolates, self-motivates, or however you want to put it. I've got to find the little, um, the little screw that holds that part down. But it ain't, it, you know, ain't no big issue. I'll, I'll find a screw and we'll put it back together. We'll, we'll put it in there and then uh, we'll finish with the. Uh, the installation of this cylinder and uh, we'll um, get the air filter on and we'll attempt to fire it. I haven't even looked in the carburetor yet. And these, uh, I got that little screw put in and uh, these mufflers go on on a stud just kind of like the, uh, the 0 029, 290, 0 39, and the um, 390 steel does. They fit on a, uh, they fit in a little notch. And this isn't in a uh, standard uh, cylinder either. It's a, uh, an, a highway uh, Titan nickel which I don't know if it makes any difference as far as how it actually functions or anything with the, the height. Because I, I have never checked a actual 51 or anything, a 50, because I don't have one. Everything I've filled with lately has been a, uh, a 51, which is the same thing. It's just got a, uh, a little bit smaller piston it the 51s have a 45 millimeter piston where the 55s have a 46 mil piston which works real well with the 020 028 super piston them being the same size i'm just knocking them bolts in a little bit further and I know the exhaust gasket's ugly and all that good jive, but uh, right now we're not working on pretty. We're just working on, let's get it together, R&D, see what happens. I'm afraid I'm going to take the, uh, the, the dog loose so I can get the muffler slide on because it's hitting the dog. And that should be enough to clear. Just gonna take my hammer and just. Them bolts are not very square in there, so. And I, the last cylinder I done, I actually had to take and uh, and grind the groove out around the exhaust flange and all that. To, make the muffler fit so i already knew there was going to be some kind of little issues there so i already went into that expecting there were going to be a little problems we're actually very close now to uh to firing this dog up and uh, seeing what she does
and I'm I'm just kind of antsy a little bit because I want to I want to know myself kind of what it does. But we will more than likely be back into it again and just do the uh, cylinder port work, raise the transfers up. Unless I just happen to find something very magical about it that I like. And I did raise the transfers and do a little extra on the uh, other 51. But I'm just kind of trying to see if... Uh, this little deal right here will uh, would help somebody else and just piss and swap it and do nothing else. I do still have the screen in the muffler. Um, I did do the same muffler mod on this one where I went in and took the baffle. It was here like this and bent it straight out. So all the exhaust comes out, hits the front, and has to go back in. So let me see if I can't get this thing primed up. All right, guys, I didn't rebuild the carburetor. I just grabbed one out of a box I got sitting back here. So here it is. Here's the 51 with the 028 Super Piston in it. And what little modifications I done to it. This son of a gun absolutely freaking screams. So uh, we'll go ahead and get it fired up for you. So I guess next up we're going to bar it up and I may do something a little funky. I may actually put a 3 8 pitch chain on it and run it against my ported 51 that's running the 325. Just to kind of see what the big difference is by upping the piston. And the only difference in the piston is the skirt length and the... Um, where the uh, top of the piston is. It's, uh, I think it's like um, 20, 20, 30 thousandths difference on the height of the piston. I can't exactly remember. Um, and I know the skirt is about seven or eight degrees on your timing wheel taller, I mean, it was shorter, so the intake actually has a longer duration because of it. So what we're going to do here probably in the next video or the next couple videos or something, we'll run this uh, 51 with a 3 8 chain and we'll run the other 51 with the 325 that's on it. And we'll compare times between them. Um, because the 51s, the 55s, they were kind of a turd when they had the 3 8 chain. I just want to see if that makes any big difference where you can actually run a 3 8 chain. And what I've got on the wall over here, I've got a, uh, a new bar uh, and a 20 inch chain I'm gonna attempt to use for the, um, well, I was gonna run it on uh, my 1010, but I'm gonna see if the bar will actually fit over on the 51. And if it does, that's what, that's what we'll do for the video. Uh, if it don't, then I will just swap the bar back and forth and run the 325. Like always, guys, give me that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you like this kind of content.